the way you hold your knife, the way we dance till three, the way you've changed my life. No, no, they can't take that away from me. No, they can't take that away from me. Ralph Bellamy asks Fred, his good friend and psychiatrist, for help with Ginger, his on and off again fiance. Ginger agrees to a session with Fred until she accidentally hears his initial insulting opinion of her and storms out. Bellamy invites Fred down to the club and while he is practicing on the driving range, Ginger appears and flusters him. Fred shows off not only his dancing, but also his golfing skills in Since They Turned Loch Lomond Into Swing. You, sir? Yes, just help me steady this thing. Thank you. Mr. Arden. Where's Tony Flagg? I want to see him. Well, uh, come in here, please. Uh, Dr. Flagg's busy right now, but pipe down and I'll take it. Well, how do you feel now? I'm not drunk anymore, Tony. I'm just dizzy. And all because this Amanda, what's her name, broke her engagement to you. Yeah, but for the third time. What happened the other two times? I got stiff. I hope she changes her mind before you get DTs. It's, to me, she's just another maladjusted woman. She's in perfect order. She's beautiful, Tony. That has nothing to do with it either. Perhaps she's merely trying to escape reality. Escape what reality? In this case, you. How do you do, Miss Cooper? I am Miss Cooper. Memo to Dr. Jones, case history 3442, Mrs. Mamie Fletcher. Dr. Jones, I am turning this case over to you for further treatment. My observations are as follows. She's a typical pampered female. What she needs, instead of the doctor, is a good spanking. However, I... Yes, Dr. Powers. Uh, Dr. Flagg, can you come to my laboratory for a moment, please? Well, there's a Miss Cooper waiting outside for me. She's another one of those dizzy, silly, maladjusted females who can't make up her mind. I'll probably find out she hasn't got one. Won't you sit down? Uh, that's my chair. It's very comfortable. But I'd plan for you to sit here. I want you to be relaxed. I'm perfectly relaxed. Perhaps you'd better sit there. <clears throat> now, uh, now, Miss Cooper, first, let's get to know each other. Why? Well, I have to know your mind as well as I know my own. Why? Look, Miss Cooper, you understand the principle of psychoanalysis, don't you? No. Well, you do know that you have two minds, the conscious and the subconscious. Really? The conscious mind is the ego. That's the thing that says, I am I, and you are you. Mine never said that. Now, you mustn't put a wall between us, Miss Cooper. To psychoanalyze you, I must interpret your dreams. What sort of things do you dream? I don't dream. Oh, come now. Everybody dreams. I don't. I wish you'd please understand that I'm only trying to help you find yourself. Well, if I ever get lost, I'll call on you. You're getting terrific lengths with your drive, Dr. Flagg. Thank you, Mr. McPherson. You're very, very encouraging. It's about time, Mac. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha. 
quack. Have you any suggestions? Maybe you were hitting it with your subconscious mind, you know, the one that dreams. Smack it once with your conscious. It'll go when I hit it. Whatever happened to that theory of coordination you were so hot about? Doing several things at the same time. Oh, that. Murph, set him up. Please like and subscribe.